time to go camping. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Val and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. On this channel, I share my adventures as I humanly solo travel part-time with my dog in my trusty four-wheel drive truck, which I've lovingly named after my grandfather, Ed Senior. But that's not all. I also tow along my cozy camper, officially known as the Cindelia, in honor of my three grandmothers. So join me as I hit the road and explore new places and make memories in the great outdoors. Let's embark on this journey together. And now without further ado, let's buckle up and truck along into today's adventure. Please take this time to like and subscribe. Checks are all done. Cameras are on. Glasses are on. And I would say it's time to go. So, yeah. Say travels for me. AWV and all the other campers that are out there right now camping and traveling during this wet unforeseen conditions as well as the dry conditions as well as the non drivers so um, with grace and mercy safe travels guys what is every time I go camping it starts raining. That's alright. I just hope it's not pouring down when I get there and I'm setting up or whatever like it was the last time when I went to um, the marine base. And it was going to be raining this morning because the meat was hurting. Crazy, huh? So I go up into, the, into town and go to the local Walmart and uh, get some firewood. Hopefully they got some good one or decent ones or whatever. If you're still viewing at this time, please take the time to like and subscribe. I will greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate you already for tuning in to AWV. Man, you just don't know. Like, you know, creators put a hard, you know, we put a lot of hard work into trying to put a video together and edit it and stuff like that. And, and try to get you guys some insight on what we're doing out here. And like I said, if you don't mind, if you please like, share, and subscribe, that would be great. After setting up, TK and I um, went on a trail walk, but it was short-lived. The yellow flies tore me up. Like, I didn't know that they love movement and they love the chase. And the more I ran, TK love it because he he's a runner. He loves to run with my son and the kids and stuff. But he loved it. But I was like out of there. Pew! So now it's time to get some din din started. So let's start the process of creating a fire. So I'm getting ready to cook, but because I didn't bring any kindling. That should be just enough. 
Anyway, because I just want to cook a steak. I got to get him. Look at that, y'all. As I was saying, that should be just enough to get that fire started with the um, with the pecan nuggets and pecan tree nuggets and um, a fire starter. Ooh wee! Yes, it took a minute, but um, it's done. It's done. Alright, so what's up, Kate fam? I am at Fort McAllister in Richmond Hill, Georgia, and I will be camping here for the next two days. Now, it is not my preferred site because I am actually facing um, one of the little roads and they call it Raccoon Road. And I don't have to explain to you why they call it Raccoon Road. Now, I don't know if it's because summertime is beginning or it's because of the weekend, but it's a bit noisy out here. Um, you have kids with their bikes. You have adults with their golf carts. Um, some of them are Campos, um, and then some of them um, are just, you know, people on their go karts. However, um, being here um, has this is my second time here, and um, the first time the kids hi, <laughs> the first time the kids and I were in tent camping, um, and that was in 2023. I am now um, solo camping with my, um, with the Cinderella, me and um, TK guys. So I'm going to attempt to cook some steak, some T-bone steaks. Um, they're thinly cut. I got them from the commissary, but they're thinly cut. But I'm going to cook them on the open fire in a cast iron, in a cast iron frying pan. But, um, yeah, that's about it right now. And, um, just watching the fire has got me in a daze. So, so I'm unsure. Do I want to cook it over the wood or do I want to cook it over the coals? Like, still put it in, because I don't feel like cleaning off no ash, off no meat. But still leave it in the frying pan. You guys let me know. Um, and I'm also trying a new... Um, when I'm camping, I like real quick, easy, inexpensive. And this is the Stella Rosa blackberry. I picked up some blackberries from the public, from the local public, but I also got some blackberry. And that's why I like it. Um, it's my first time trying this. What I need to do is just collect all the Stella Rosas and put them on my shelf, and then um, just taste test them or whatever. But yeah, guys. Um, this is what I'm doing this weekend. And yeah. Adventures of Val continues. I'm going to slow down um, probably for you know, a couple weeks. Of, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to slow down. Because when I slow down, I get bored in the house. And I start doing things. Y'all see me making yogurt. And vinegar. I can't wait until the vinegar is done. Um, fuzzy dog. I am willing to bet that um, that vinegar, especially the watermelon vinegar, is going to come out good. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, yeah, that has a nice little bite to it. It's sweet. It's just like just like blackberries like that's what it reminds me of without the seeds i don't know 
anyway, um, let me tend to my fire. Um, <laughs> I have a poker, y'all, a real poker from when I used to, uh, um, um, well, I still only have a real poker, but when I used to have a fireplace that actually would have real wood. Nowadays, everybody wants to make a new build and either put electric fireplaces in there or gas powered from the country. I want a real wood fire stove, firewood, all that. I don't know. Life is changing, y'all. Life is changing. But, yeah. And as you can hear it, the kids are in the background having, having fun. Um, don't want kids to. And that's what camping and life is all about. These babies are out here having fun. They'll remember these memories. And, um, yeah, like, yeah. I remember being in the woods with my dad and um, being in certain shallow creeks and rivers and stuff like that. Like, man, those those places were awesome. And just imagine if, if you know, Benny would have let us set up, like, a tent or something like that on the back. Well, now it's Fort Moore. Like, back by those rivers and stuff. Those would have been some awesome memories. I would have gotten eaten by a bear or something, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. Those are the chances and the risks that you take when y'all in the woods. Um, because I guarantee you, I'm going to see something crazy before I leave this swamp land here. And I hope it's not near, too near me when I see it. But I'm going to take you guys around tomorrow. Now I'm probably going on the bike or in the truck, depending on the weather. And I'll take you guys around tomorrow and let you see some more, a little bit, you know, like close-ups and stuff like that of this area. Um, just in case you guys miss my one of my first videos um, with the tent camping with the kids um, back last year. And anyway, guys, I'm going to try to poke this fire and try to see what I can make happen and see if I can get some food started. And it's crazy because I'm intermittent fasting and now I'm not when I'm camping because it's because I plan to cook outdoors as much as I can. Um, but I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to cook outdoors as much as I can for the for the next um, few days, and um, we're gonna go from there, and you know, hey. It is what it is. Now, I will probably be cooking on the griddle tomorrow because the, the food that I'm cooking tomorrow is going to be a little different. But I'm not going to show you guys step by step what I'm cooking tonight. It's just know that it is some steak and some zucchini. And I am going to um, just show you guys probably a picture or a video if I remember. But I'm going to continue this fight right now and hop to it. I think this is about back on the scene, guys. Okay, so dinner was great. I didn't get a chance to film or take a picture, but trust me when I say it was awesome, it was awesome. And thank goodness for Netflix downloads, y'all. I was able to catch a comedy show that I had downloaded from the previous camping trip. And yes, I was able to laugh, look, and enjoy before I went to sleep. So guys, I hope you can hear me, but because the air is on, but we are getting to go mushroom identification foraging with one of the park rangers. And when I say we, um, my son is meeting me out here. Um, he was in the area and yes, I'm excited, man. I am excited. So hopefully you guys, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some things that you don't know and some things that I need to learn about mushroom foraging because I love mushrooms. They're expensive, but hey, if I can go out foraging my own, and guys, I even got a little veggie bag. I am so ready. When bug spray becomes your new perfume, you know you're camping. My foraging partner has arrived.
That's one thing about this area, boy. It ain't shy no palm trees. You ain't shy no palm trees. Shy of palm trees. We were sitting around waiting on others to show up, but they didn't. So it was just the two of us that was taking the trail with the ranger. Okay, so guys, my son and I are here at um, Fort McAllister. <laughs> and we have our friendly ranger here. Her name is Angelina. And um, we are getting ready to do a mushroom mayhem hike. <laughs> so stay tuned and just be ready. <laughs> I want to talk about these two mushrooms. One of them is the button mushroom and the other one is the death cap mushroom. Now it's very important to know which one's poisonous and which one is edible, especially if you're in a survival situation. You're looking at, well, what do I pick up? Even if you're just foraging from day to day, it's very important to know what you're looking at. First of all, always wear gloves when you're going out in mushroom hunting. Even if you think it's completely fine, you never know. Uh, there's some stuff that can cause extreme irritation to skin or you aren't paying attention You accidentally scratch your face when you're picking up whatever mushroom and It turns out to be poisonous and you accidentally ingest it like there's all kinds of stuff. You want to be very careful so just With no prior knowledge without looking which one of these do you think is a normal edible mushroom or a poisonous mushroom? edible poisonous mm. He's right. Oh, wow. This is the death cap mushroom and this is the button mushroom. Okay. Now, button mushroom, it's cultivated all over the U.S. and it, a lot of people have this in their kitchen. Uh, it carries vitamin D, copper, zinc, potassium, and it's a low calorie food. It's this great little mushroom. Yeah. Death cap mushroom, <laughs> it, symptoms can uh, within 6 to 24 hours of consumption, you'll get nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach cramps. And by then, it's already fully ingested. Then, liver and kidney failure will occur within 48 hours of consumption. Wow. So, <laughs> okay. it's extremely important you know what you're looking at. So, like, just that right there. You're just like, yeah. oh, well, this, of course, is the edible yeah. one. No. Yeah. And especially So you when, gotta know what you're doing when you're out here trying to forage, yeah. And when the death cap is young, uh it's almost indistinguishable between the young button mushroom. Oh wow. The full grown button mushroom. Oh, so wow. you gotta pay a lot of attention. Sometimes the only way you can tell between these two is a spore print, especially when it's young. But if you look at this full grown one, it kinda has a big more umbrella, it takes on a bit of a bluish hue mm -hmm. and it tans out a little bit as well where this these take stay relatively small and round okay. and, th and they're not shiny either okay. they're pretty matte as you can see all right awesome does that make sense yep all right as we're go when you're looking for mushroom for this kind of stuff it's important to have the right equipment on you as well mm -hmm. though we're not going to be collecting anything today this is a state park we gotta leave what we see. Pretend we're walking into nature's house. You don't want anybody taking anything from your house. So we're not gonna take anything from nature's house. Okay. But typically, I like to have some kind of knife. You can, I have like the switchblade here. Simple little switchblade, it's just nice to bring with you. I also have a little fancy mushroom knife. Okay. With a brush on the end and a curved blade. But any good three to four inch blade will do. Okay. And this could help if you're like putting something up a tree or from the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I know recently I thought I had found a puffball, cut it open, found out it was an earth ball, was not a puffball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this not knife yeah. was helpful with yeah. getting it off the ground. Especially if you, I think, is what what grows on trees, the turkey tails and all that stuff. And, we also um, have false turkey tail. Yeah. So yeah. it's very important to look at that. But we we have 
turkey tail everywhere. Aww. But there's also another one called latte bracket that looks very similar. Now the latte bracket is medicinal, but you all gotta know what you're looking at. Okay. Something I also have is I always have some kind of gathering bag. I have a little fancy one oh. <laughs> where it can unfurl. Oh, nice. But any kind of um, gathering basket will do. A lot of people will bring plastic grocery bags with them, which is great uh -huh. for... Uh, um, Hi, little girl. Looks like he might be... Oh, is that a hickory nut? Or did yeah. he steal some food? <laughs> he probably did. If you guys want to copy this picture, it'll be okay. No. So we're going to be looking, as we're along the trail, we're going to be looking at like the basic trees. If we see any de decaying wood, we're going to be looking at that, at that as well. Ooh. There he is. So literally anywhere we can find hay, we're going to be looking for Okay, so this one got pulled up, but let's look at what we have. First, I'm gonna try and carefully flip it over. Look, let's look at the top, it has a nice like brown color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit torn up. As a, a smooth stalk, I'm not seeing any skirts or rings, it's very smooth. And let's look at the gills. They all look like they come into the center pretty smoothly. Okay. Let's see if we can't now, no matter who you are, no, on a tree. So we know okay. it's not this. Okay. Let's look through. We know it's not this. It doesn't have this color. Mm -hmm. We're looking for something brown. Okay. Understand that not ev everything will always be one color. Sometimes they vary in color. Okay. around and umbrella like with a thin stalk yep mm -hmm. and it, that thin goes off of that as well it's brown. it be as it continues it'll start to expand and mm -hmm. convex i don't think this one quite got there but it's like a medium brown range from off-white to dark brown yep i would say i would say we and now that it's raining, there's stuff that can show up and we wouldn't even know mm -hmm. because of the rain. Okay, so that is my sin, you guys. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Mm -hmm. it's picking up. But it's like white. Oh, you probably can take a little look. Mm-hmm. The Philly of Hoodler Crab. That is so gorgeous out there. Oh, yeah. And I want you to try and use them. Oh, wait, wait. Hey guys, this is what happens. They're all, all over, over us. <laughs> Don't take a shower before coming on a hike. <laughs> oh my God. It's quite smooth. Yeah, this is a smooth texture. It's very smooth. So is the stock. The stock's very smooth. So both the entire mushrooms are quite smooth. Anything else that we see? I choose to cut my black shape, my black paper into a heart shape because she said I can cut whatever shape I wanted. Playing with this glue took me all the way back to grade school. Hopefully, I got it this time. Stop it, Donovan. I know you're looking at me. <laughs> I just feel his eyes. <laughs> so what I'm, I'm gonna come around with my, with the, one of my knives. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out uh, this bit on the bottom. I'm also gonna cut off the stalk. I just wanna make sure the gills are intact. For, I think your bigger one should be okay. I'll still, I would still like take off the edges a little bit so you can actually get to the gills. 
but to get but to get the spore print, you kind of need it to spore. So I'm gonna. I got the gills a tiny bit, but that's okay. I want to avoid the gills as much as possible. So now I would have this. I can put this on my paper, and I would get a spore print from that. But I'm gonna help you with this one because it's so small. Uh, thank you. This one I don't even know if you can fit your hand in. You're probably yeah. looking at you're probably looking at this one like um. Okay. It's like all nice and rainy. The ambiance is actually kind of perfect for mushrooms. Uh huh. So, so far with what we've seen, what has been like your favorite find? Um, I think I know what yours is. <laughs> the one with all the rings. Those are fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Want me to let me see it? Yeah, what was your favorite part? Yeah, your favorite part. That one. That one. Oh, the one with the rings? Mm -hmm. Oh. That was a good one. Yeah. What was mine? I don't know about finding the birch bro hill. Yeah. That last but one. The, I like that find because we were walking upon it and didn't really, you know, we were looking for the other ones and that, those were directly in the trail. Like, hey, here I am. Yeah, some t most of the time you won't find it like that, but when you do, it's like, it's fun. Yeah. It's like sometimes you do and then don't, and then sometimes it's like, oh, it's right underneath me. Uh -huh. That first one was funny because I just looked and I was like, "Why, hey, yeah." And then he, he was well, looking at me like, "Oh, see, see that, yeah." Now we're gonna get a spray bottle. Now it's important to make sure that the environment they're in is humid, so we're gonna isolate their little environment. Both the black and white but paper are used to collect to the spore sure print. So guys, we learned how to do a mushroom spore print, basically so we can further our knowledge in the process. After a few failed attempts of crabbing successfully, I decided that it was time to go get some din din. If you can't catch it, go buy it.
Alright, so we're gonna eat at Fishtails, Fort McAllister Marina. So we're choosing to eat outside. And the sun is joining me. Um, that, um, you want the swallow table? Great meal. Thank you. So while we wait, I'm gonna take you guys down to the marina. Alright, so this is the marina. We have boats here, we have boats here. Oh yeah, and then we have um, charters that they have here. I forgot. I've eaten here several times, but they also have charters. Um, sharps, fishing charters, I heard it's good. Don't know. Um, I don't like, I like being on the shore of the water, but not in the water. <laughs> well, there's Captain Dave's. They get some free advertisement here. And they got some nice boats out here. Imagine bump I'm um, talking here. You can eat some good food and get some good drinks. Oh, there's bait in here. Even though we're not here for fish tails, but how's the vibe here at the restaurant? It's, it's alright. It's not like Florida, I know. No, it isn't yeah, but, but it'll do. Yeah, it's it's by the water, so let's take the good to the bad, so we establish our presence back in Florida. I didn't even notice that this place had a store, it had a bake shop. This is awesome. They got live baked shrimps, eels, mud, and minnows. So first up was our appetizer, which is our fried okra. Okra is so good for you guys. And as well, it's one of the only um, things that are originated or original to Africa that we have here in the U.S. Not one of the only things, but was one of the first. And I had to have a witch's water or whatever it's called. I forgot what it's called, but I get it every time I come here. It's delicious. It's got a lot of different alcohols in it, but it's delicious. So we both got the low country boil. I don't, I don't like her okay. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Although my son did not camp with me, him hanging out with me that day was just awesome. Um, anytime your family can spend some time with you while you're camping, um, it eliminates, I think, a lot of, you know, some of the downtime that you have in between. But this was amazing. And I say all that to say this because most young adults are not trying to hang around their mamas or dads on the weekends. Mm. Yeah, 
one boat fuel this. Ooh, woo! Going nowhere. Suck up, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah! Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, baby. like a steamboat the one thing i like about um fish shells you are not far from the campground see straight ahead there is the campground entrance i survived savage island and the yellow flies Signing out of site 24. Everything is clean.